Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, Vinny is a bike Carfight Vanguard Deck Professor. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's go to the This time we're covering set 10 Keter Sanctuary Soul Ryron. So, as we all know, Soul Ryron was meant to be Hexa Orb's replacement, and then Hexa Orb got Aquamarine and pretty much proved that statement wrong. But, you know, Soul Ryron is pretty much a like combination of golds, quote unquote plus hexa where you look at the top card and then you kind of can call it and then you get numbers based off it so all around it's very interesting it just has the ability to stack the deck but it is different enough to where it just doesn't feel like second hexa even though a lot of people called it second hexa so we're gonna get the starter shall we and we can see what i mean by second hexa quote unquote First up today, we have our starter in Sage of Horoscopy Siron. Grade 0 boost, 5k shield, 8, 6k base. Auto road point for one second, draw card. Standard starter spot, but you get a free draw if you win second. And that's pretty much all I can say about it. I gotta say, though, its art does look cool. I don't know why I like this thing's art so much. It just, you know, he looks so happy. He has, like, the smile of such an innocent child with, like, his blue orb in it. And I just like the color blue for some reason now. So, one of Siron in the ride deck. None of your ride deck requires this, but might as well go for the full theme. Let me have our over trigger and true arbitrator dragon of hundred swords Duravalas, my favorite of the two over triggers from Keter, and apparently the one that likes me more. Grade zero boost fifty k shield five k power can over trigger. You may have an over trigger in your deck. Reveal trigger card draw a card. Choose one of these cards turn. And if, if you reveal it during draft check, activate its death effect to end of turn. You can also perform draft check for the battle your rear guards attack. I recently got to pull that off twice in Griffel Gila. And somehow Graham Grace survived that. One of them, at least. But um, Dorvalas is pretty solid. You know, being able to give your rear guard to drive checks puts a lot more pressure on your opponent with them. Especially because, you know, most of the time you're going to have grade 3 rear guards. At least the way this deck plays, you're going to have, like, grade 3 rear guards. So you're going to have probably a total of sextuple drive, which is great pressure. And not to mention the fact that one of your rear guards can continuously stand that turn. So even more pressure. Around Dorvalas is solid. You can run Amartinoa as well, or instead, because they have the same exact skill. But I'd rather run Dorvalas because this one is new it works with the newer deck and not to mention the fact that even the armor to know if it's the theme more this one has proven more that it will show up so uh yeah one of duravala's let me have our normal triggers. First up, we have two copies of both a front and a draw trigger. Bardo Heavenly Song, Alpac, and Protection Magic Pro B. So there are draw triggers in front, respectively. Pro B is a grade zero boost, 5k shield, 4k base, while Bard is a 4k base, 15k shield, grade zero with boost. And they both share the same skill where it contains guards. So if your opponent's vanguards are grade through grade, they can plus 5k shield. All around pretty solid. Being able to be a 10k and 20k shield, respectively, is great for guarding power. Not to mention the fact that the draw trigger helps increase hand, though you don't need it too much, which is why it's at two of because the deck does enough drawing and calling from deck as is. And then as for the front trigger, the deck has a pseudo person persona ride plus a possible persona ride and can multi-attack and then get more numbers you don't need fronts that badly but the fronts do help if you want to use them so two of each let me have a total of seven crits three copies of white thing which dismal grades of boost 15k show 5k power my thought process on this one well he's second hexa so might as well run the hexa crit with them and then four copies of blade feather grades of boost 15k show 4k power continues uh, auto rear guard at the end about it boost it put it to soul choose remutes it gets plus 2k for the turn so the 2k actually does help in this deck a little bit depending on very specific situations but also the fact that he can go to soul especially because soul larian constantly requires soul so if for some reason you bricked and you didn't see any of your soul chargers you can rely on blade Blade feather. Not saying you will have to, I'm just saying if you have to. So seven crits, because you know you have pseudo persona right, so might as well have like the extra push you can on it, and then plus the front triggers and draws, and then we run on normal heals and four copies of circling sorceress, grid zoo boost 15k show, 5k power, standard heal, no spots about it. Um, it's just a vanilla. I don't really like the effect heals too much. They're too situational in my opinion, with them being mostly 10ks most of the time, and then only in their specific situations tailored for them they are 25k shields i'd rather have the permanent 15k shield if you want to play the effect heals because maybe you're playing a competitive and those heals are effective for you or maybe you're playing locals and a lot of people play a specific type of deck to where those counter heals are useful then go ahead but i prefer the standard 15k if you want to go do your uh counter heals go ahead but i'd rather have this one then we have our grade ones. First up, we run four, two copies of a card I knew would be useful. She's always useful when a deck first comes out, and then afterwards she kind of uses, loses her usefulness, but she has proven useful for a long time now, and that is Knight of Heavenly Piercing Isalta. Grade one boost, 5k shield, AK base, auto one place on rear guard or discard it from your hand during your turn. Choose from your back row rear guards and stand it. All around, it's a solid ability because Solarian can call it to front row or back row, so therefore you can boost up the column, use Solarian skill on attack to call this from the top card of the deck into front row circle, and then use her skill to stand the 
the back row one. So you basically get another column. All right, I really love using Assault to Skill to get like a big column swing and then get a second big column swing. And this is the situation where Bladefeather would be useful because if you do have to call her, you can turn into a 10k base with Bladefeather skill. Our on Assault is pretty solid. And even though she's a two of, I see her very often enough in this deck. So if I have to rely on the column swing for whatever reason, I can. So two of Assault, just a good grade one. Then we have four copies of our PG and Paladinium Zeal Dragon, Grade 1 Boost, Zero Sources, K Base, Continue Sentinel. You may have up to four cells in deck on this one point guard circle. You, you can choose one from units. You choose one of your units. It cannot be hit on the battle. And if your hand is true, more cards, two cards, and a card. Standard PG, no special battle, basically means if this only one card you can place on guard circle, you don't have to discard one, which is great because that means you can be as aggressive as you want in the early game, go all in on the offense. And then when your opponent counterattacks you, if you only have two hand cards, you can just throw this down and boom, you don't have to discard one, which is great because that means that next hand card can be used for a Persona Ride, it can be used for Column Rear Guard, or can be used for guarding that same turn. All around, Zeal is just a solid PG. You can run Aegis Meyer too because they have the exact same skill, but because, again, this deck is new, might as well run the newer of the two PGs, so Paladinium Zeal is a 4 for me. And then we move on to our last unit, in, or last grade one, not the last unit in the deck, I don't know where I was going with that. One of in the ride deck, three of in the main deck, because she is actually useful. Sage of Elixir Alrion. Grade one boost by K Shield, AK base. I love this ride line specifically a, a lot more than I love others, because they're naming conventions. Like, you know, it's not just the title, but it's like their legit names are so similar to each other to the point where in my mind i consider them siblings and the grade two is like the middle one the grade one's the second youngest the uh grade zero wait no the third yeah the second youngest the grade zero is the youngest and the grade three is just dad slash the oldest of the group anyways elron on a sort of pond by a sage of robust Staragon, you can either you can declare either a normie or trigger unit, reveal the top card of your deck, and if the card type is the card you revealed, uh, you may put it to your hand, and if you do not put it to hand, you can put the revealed card into the solar top of deck. So what I love about Elrond is this. If you get it wrong, you either stack it to deck or solar charge. If you get it right, you can still do either of the two, but you can also add it to hand. And the reason why I say this is because it says may, meaning you can just choose not to put it to hand. All around, pretty solid because of basically, if you get her skill right, you are guaranteed to get either get a hand card, a slow card, or a trigger at top, most likely. So solid ability on that front, regardless of how we look at this. And then auto, when it's placed on rear guard circle, if you have a Vanguard Solari in its card name, choose up to one Normita from your hand and reveal it. And if you di did reveal a card, you can draw a card and then put the reveal card at the top of your deck. So great. You can deck stack for Solarian. And then if you use this in combination with a few other cards, you can effectively just reveal it to your opponent your hand one by one and then just keep drawing cards or keep swapping a card in your hand with the top card of your deck to the point where you could technically guarantee you see triggers. So... Four of Elrion. It's just a solid grade one. It does all of its skills for free and has probably one of the best ride deck skills I've ever seen. And I'm glad that she's one of the few cards bringing back the rear guard skills for ride deck cards. So one of them in the ride deck, three of in the main deck. Then we have our grade twos. First up, we have four copies of Magic of Alteration Tunar. She has seen a lot of play in a lot of my Cuter Century decks lately, and there's good reason for that. Great tune and stuff like Shield, 10k base, all the rear guard, the end of battle, she attacked while boosted. If your damage is three more face down cards, put it to solo counter charge one. Okay, while Solarian himself may not rack up too much counter blast at once, especially because his deck already has a built in counter charger in the sake of the grade two, one of the deck's grade threes does rack up counter blast pretty fast. So being able to not only get soul for Solarian, but also refresh one of those counter blasts is all around pretty solid, and I love to know for that a lot she's just an amazing grade two and not to mention the fact technically speaking you can pull off her and the counter charging other grade two at once so four of two rounds she's just saw grade two i like her a lot there's nothing much i can say about her then we move on to four copies of academic of demonstration purek I definitely said that wrong. Let me try again. Yurik, because in my mind, the P is silent. Someone proved me wrong on that. Anyways, good turn to stuff like shield, 10k base. Auto rear guard when a normal unit is revealed by the ability of your Vanguard Solar and his card until end of turn, this unit gets a boost and plus 5k power. Okay. So, if Solari, so what I love about Solari is that not only can he, ch just like this one where he can choose a benefit or like which unit it will be, but what I also love about it is thanks to this thing, even if you're wrong, depending on what you said, this still gets plus five and boost. Cause it doesn't mean that your guess has to be right. You just have to flip over a normal unit, which again, this deck has multiple ways of stacking, this being one of them. But then if you say, for example, you want to see a trigger and you said trigger, even if you are wrong and you don't get Solarian's 5k boost off, you still turn this thing into a booster because most likely it's a normal unit because this deck doesn't run orders. So all around, I love it. And this is my favorite restand target for Isalta, where you know you just boost with the column, and then maybe if you're doing multi attack plays, you swing with another column, and then you swing with Solar and you check top two, you call Isalta to the column in front of this thing, or, and then you use its skill to restand this. So all around, solid. I love this great tube a lot. It's a 15k booster, and there's only more I can say about it, four of. 
Then we run four copies, three in the main deck, one in the ride deck of our grade two and the other counter charger in this deck. A lot of other deck has two counter chargers. Sage of Robust Storgon. Grade two is a 5k shield tank at base. Again, I love his blue staff. It looks so amazing and his stance with it too and his white cloak. Um, Aldo when it's rode upon by a unit with Solar in his card name, choose a Sage of Elixir Elrion from your soul. Call that card in this card to rear guard. Okay, I am kind of disappointed that this one stole the skill of Turan from Amajestars where, you know, just calls itself in the grade one. But again, A, the grade one procs off from this because it's on place from anywhere, so it's an immediate deck stack, which is why I constantly forget it. But then also, its other skill is Auto Rear Guard. When a normal unit is revealed by the ability of Vanguard Solar in its card name, so just like this one, even if we say you're going to reveal a trigger and you reveal a normal unit, you still get two pluses off this. To end of turn, this unit gets the following ability. Auto Rear Guard, at the end of the battle that this unit attacked, retire this unit to counter charge one. So, all around, pretty solid, because not only does it have to not be boosted, but this is how you do your double counter charge play. What you do is you swing with, uh, I'm not going to say the grade three, but we swing with one of our grade threes. We swing with this thing, or we not, yeah, with this thing, and then at the end of the battle, retire it to counter charge. Then you swing with Vanguard Solarian, you flip over this, you call it, and then, you know, you use the grade three skill during the drive check that kind of gives you a hint to what it is and then you use two ran and then you send it to soul to counter charge one and then use that grade three that way you get two counter charge in one turn and you technically have your cb cost by what i think you actually did have your cb cost basically so all run star god's really good you can do multi-attack plays you can open a rear guard circle so you're not technically killing over a unit and it can counter charge all at once so might as well run a three of in the main deck one of in the ride deck just a good grade two believe it or not i actually forget that he's at a constant four because i rarely draw into him normally the only one i get is the one that i get from ride deck so fair enough and then we went on to our grade threes. Here is the grade three I was just talking about in that combo. Three copies of Divine Sister Lepisto. Grade three, drive percent 13k base, auto rear guard at the, when your drive check reveals a trigger unit, specifically your drive check, not the Vanguard. So if you sacked the over, this is not a once per turn. Meaning you can just keep doing this ability as long as you have CB. What this ability is, you may ask. Counter blast two to stand her and get plus five. So plus Solarian skill, she's a 23 with a constant restand every time you see a trigger, regardless of whose drive check it is, as long as you are seeing the trigger. And with counter charges like these two, you can do it at least twice, maybe even three times. Three Lepisto. Solid grade three, allows for some bullshit multi-attack, and just put pressure on your opponent. And even if you don't restand, you can still see B2 just to get plus 5k. Because, I don't know, maybe you need to kill that turn. So, Dave Lepesto. Just a solid grade 3 that can multi-attack with. I love how when Solarian first came out, the first time I read it, the first thing that went to mind is, can I abuse this with Lepisto? 3 of. Good, good grade 3. Then we run four copies of Dependable Pierce Dragon, Grade 3 Turn Drive Persona, right? 13k base. Auto when it's placed on Rear Guard Circle by any means, so whether it's by hand, deck, or drop zone. If your Vanguard has the lower in its card name, choose up to one normal meter from your hand. Reveal it. If you revealed a card, draw a card and put the reveal card on top of deck. Okay, so the other card you can instigate loops with with this one. Again, technically speaking, you're just swapping out hand cards, but there is technically a way to guarantee a trigger to end up at top. I just forgot what it was, um, but fair enough. Pretty solid skill. And then auto rear guard once per turn when a normal unit is revealed by the ability of your Vanguard Solar in his card name. Again, you could just call a trigger, even though most of the time you're going to know what's at the top of your deck. But if you call a trigger, it still gets this effect regardless, uh, even if you're wrong. This unit gets auto rear guard. When this unit attacks, it, you may have it get plus 5k power for the battle. And if you do, put it to solve at the end of the battle to end of turn. So, regardless of who it swings into, as long as you flipped over a normal unit for the reveal, it's an 18k swing. And it goes to soul end of battle. The only way for this to be quote unquote better is if you got a draw out of it, but that would actually be bad because this opens up rear guard circles and the card you put on top is probably something you want to call from Solarian. So all around dependable is an amazing grade three. He can swap out hand cards and you don't even have to use his skill if you don't want to. And then not to mention the fact that he can be an 18k swing into literally anything as long as you flipped over a normal unit, which him himself almost guarantees. Four of defend ah, Dependable Peers. Just a solid grade three, and I love it skill so much. Then we have our last card in the deck. Three of in the main deck, one of in the ride deck of Great Sage of Heavenly Law, Solarian. A lot of people said this was grown up merit, and I jokingly said it too, even though I didn't see it. I still kind of see it and kind of don't see it now, but I gotta say, I really do love looking at him with his white bishop cloak and then like the blue stars and like his staff. It just looks so cool. Anyways, great three turn persona, 13k base. Auto Vanguard at the beginning of your battle phase by soul blasting one during, uh, you can declare either a normal unit or a trigger unit, reveal the top card of your deck. If you reveal a card type that you declared, this unit gets contains Vanguard, all your units, and the, uh, get plus 5k power to end of turn. I'm sorry, what? 
I'm sorry, all your units? I thought it was front row. I pulled this straight from the fandom this morning, by the way. Huh. Okay, then. Cool. That is, you learn something new every day, unless the fandom's wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's right, because again, I say, I pulled it from the fandom this morning. It's been two hours since then, so... Whew. And then auto vanguard when this attacks a vanguard by carrying bossing one look at the top two cards of your deck choose what card from them call to rear guard or discard it and then put the rest on top or bottom. Okay, A, you don't have to call if you don't want to, but you're most likely going to. And then B, you can choose to put the other card either back at the top because it's a trigger or you can just send it to bottom. All around pretty solid that now apparently he can give 5k to the whole board. Someone please tell me if I'm wrong because I feel like before it was just your front row gets the plus five, but... Apparently your whole board gets it, which that means I've been using this thing wrong and I have not been abusing it to its full power, but um Cool Board numbers almost guaranteed by these two alone And then not to mention the fact that you know it can get you multi attack for the cost of a CB And then with this one you can get technically five attacks in a turn sack the over probably six or seven Saw grade three good numbers multi attack and you can do this all while your opponents at grade two Nothing can be argued for this. Cool for of. And that's it for the deck. I hope you guys enjoy. I have research to do now to see if that skill is actually right. Because I refuse to believe for a second that that's actually its skill. But if it is, then oh my god, I need to go bully my friend real quickly with that. But um, it, it, this deck is solid. You know, it gets the numbers, it gets the deck stack, it can get multi-attack. And it does all of this while your opponent's at grade 2. It can bully the hell out of them. And it's just fun to play all around. So I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, everyone's going to follow Twitch. And I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to set up your vanguards. Come